The Christmas season is one of the most exciting times of the year, and I look forward to it with all of my heart. So this morning, we reflected on the gift that Jesus Christ came into the earth to bring us, and one of those gifts was peace. The Bible says that he is the Prince of Peace, and that means that God wants you to have peace. He doesn't want you to be frustrated, worried uh, with all of the trials and circumstances that you're going through in your life because he came to bring peace in the world. He has provided peace for you and I. Praise the Lord Church. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes, I hope you're like me during the week. Most of the time I'm at home and I'm really not in the office, but I'm at home and I'm studying and I'm preparing and doing all the little normal things that I get a chance to do. But when I get a chance to come out, I come out to the house of the Lord. I'm excited about being with God's people. I'm excited about giving you a word that will literally encourage your life and cause you to move forward. Amen. So I hope you came this morning morning expecting. I hope that you're in your house, wherever you are, whether you're in the sanctuary, you're in the car, whether you're at work, but you came expecting a word from the Lord. This is the season where we celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I hope you're excited about celebrating Jesus. We have gone through so much this year. So, you know, it, our Lord and our Savior that we celebrate, he is worthy to be praised. Isn't he? He's worthy to be praised. After all, you're listening this morning. He's still worthy. You at home, he's still worthy. You're in the building, God is still worthy. You're able to lift your hands, guess what? God is still worthy. You have a roof over your head this morning, God is still worthy. Regardless of what we've gone through, God is worthy of our praise. And I don't want us to miss this season. I don't want us to miss what the season is about. It is about celebrating why Jesus came to the earth for for us. We celebrate the birth of our Savior. We get a chance to just give him praise and reflect and focus on what he came, the reason that he came, why he's here, and why he is moving in our lives. We get to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. So church, can we praise him one more time? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, come on. I believe y'all can do just a little bit better. He's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He is Jehovah. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the ending. He's your way out of no way. Yes, he is. He's your healer. God is your deliverer. He deserves all that praise. He's your provider. He's the source of your strength. Oh, yes, he's your help. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. He deserves. He deserves all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor that we can give his name. For he is a worthy God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people, meaning that God delights in your praise. Every time you worship him, God delights in your praise. So he deserved that praise and we want to make sure that when we come to the house of the Lord, that we're giving God all our praise, that we're not going to let the rocks cry out. I have decided I'm not going to let nobody else out praise me. I've decided I'm going to give God praise whether I feel like it or whether I don't. He still deserves all the praise, the glory and the honor. Amen. We serve a worthy God. Well, this morning, again, I'm glad that you are here. Let me pray over us as we get ready to go into the word of God today. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace and your mercies that you give to us that are new each and every day. And for that, we're grateful. We ask that you will bless our time together. Would you allow the anointing to begin to fall in this room? May your presence engulf our heart as we lean in to hear what you have to say to us 
us today, God. Father, let this word not fall to the ground, but it will produce a harvest in our lives. And God will give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah. You and I live in a world that has suffered turbulence since the beginning and we so desperately need genuine peace to be able to walk through this life we need the peace because a heart that likes peace is full of anxiety and fear a heart that likes peace is inwardly feeling troubled it's inwardly shaken because when you face problems when you face trials when you face trouble if you don't have peace, if your heart is void of peace, you feel all of the stress that comes with the heart that does not have peace. That is why we need the gift of peace. And the gift of peace is only given by Jesus Christ. He came so that we could have the gift of peace. Isaiah predicted the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into the world that he would come and it, his name would be called the Prince of Peace. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6. We're still in the same passage this morning. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, and prince of peace. Now Isaiah, what Isaiah was saying to us that a child was going to be born unto us. And a son was given. See, the son was given by the father. And the son was given to us as a gift. And his name was going to be called the prince of peace. Amen. I'm not talking about the Prince of Bel-Air. I'm talking about the Prince of Peace. And see, at the very first Christmas, when the angels appeared to the shepherds, this is what they said. It says, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth and goodwill towards men. See, Isaiah announced that God, Jesus Christ, was coming with peace. The angels announced that Jesus was coming with peace. See, the essence of his name indicated why he was coming. Coming. It indicated his purpose on earth. The word says that he is, his name is the Prince of Peace. His ministry was all about peace, to bring peace to the earth. And when Jesus finished his time here on earth and before he left and before he went back to heaven, this is what he said in John chapter 14, verses 27. He says, the peace I leave you, my peace I I give you. I do not give you as the world gives you, but do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Man, that's good news to us today. I believe that that was uh, way back uh, in time, but John chapter 14 verses 29 is very fitting for us today. We need the peace of God in our lives. When you're going through troubled times, you need the peace peace of God. You need God to literally guard your heart with peace. So Jesus was saying to us that he came to give us the gift of peace. And he said, I'm coming to give you the gift of peace, only the gift that I can give you. Nobody else can give you this kind of peace. In other words, nobody else can provide you the kind of peace that Jesus given is going to give us. You can't find this peace in a bottle. You can't find this peace in a pill. You can't and find it in some drugs. You're not going to be able to find this kind of peace on your vacation. You're not going to be able to find this peace burning some sage in your household. You're not going to be able to find this kind of peace going from, from one relationship to the another relationship. You're not going to find this kind of peace in government. <laughs> See, the kind 
of peace that God is going to give to us. Jesus is a providing for us is only the peace that the Lord is able to give to us. The world cannot give us this kind of peace. See, the world's peace is phony and it's fragile and it doesn't always last. It doesn't last long, but you need the peace of God, the kind of peace that is a stabilizers through the storm. The kind of peace that is going to go before you when you have trials in your life. The kind of peace is going to calm your heart. So this Christmas, I want us to look at the Prince of Peace that we're able to look up to him. So he's already come for us and he's come to provide us a gift. Let's look to the Prince of Peace, especially after we have gone through a year like 2020. We need peace in our life. Amen. This year has brought us many trials, heartaches, fears, pain, confusion. Many of you are tired and you're exhausted. You're worried and you're just literally worn out. This has been a frustrating, a tough year for you. You've been stressed in so many ways and we can't even name them. But that is why we need the peace that God provides for us. So the good news that God, Jesus came in the earth for us. He came for us so that we can have peace. And see, God does not want you to go into the next year full of stress. He didn't want you to go in 2021 full of anxiety. He he doesn't want you to go in 2021 in fear. Instead, he wants you to be filled with peace, tranquility, and uh, and serenity. He wants you to kind of have that peace that will just literally warm your heart. See, this is what we have. We have confidence confidence in our Lord, in our Savior. Because of what our Lord has provided for us, he has given us peace. So this morning, I want to look at a couple of kinds of peace that I believe that Jesus had provided for us. He's giving us the gift of peace. When you think about it as a gift, That means that God has already came. He's already providing it for us. And he wants each and every one of us to obtain this gift of peace. There are 790 verses in the Bible that is on peace. And when you categorize those verses, they fall into three different categories. And there is the spiritual peace. There is the emotional peace. And then we have the relational peace peace. The peace with God. That is the peace that reassures us. We have the assurance uh, that we have, we receive through our faith that we've made it right with the Lord. So we have the peace of God. We have the peace with God. God is with us. Uh, And then we have the peace with God, peace within us. So that peace is the peace of God that comes us when we go through the midst of storms in our life. And see, most of you, you've been through some things, but when you have the peace within, you have the peace of God that goes with you. And then we have peace with others. That's when we're talking about that relationship peace. That is a peace that stills us when people are around us and it's causing us to be frustrated or causing us to have some kind of anxiety or when people are pushing your buttons, then we have, we're able to have peace with others. Now, Jesus offered us three different kinds of peace. And I want to look at each one of these peace this morning individually so that we can glean from what the word of God says. Number one, peace with God. That is the spiritual peace. And it's probably one of the most important pieces that you can ever have because without this one, everything else is ineffective. So we have the peace with God. That is when you have your relationships. When you think about a relationship and your relationship, relationship is out of whack. When there is tension between a husband and a wife and a girlfriend and a boyfriend, guess what happens? It it strains that relationship. That relationship has conflict and it literally robs you of your peace. Not only your peace, but your joy. You know, when you have an argument with your spouse, guess what is on your mind 24 seven, you're thinking about it and you are, you just kind of rehearsing it over in your mind. It robs you of your 
your joy. It robs you of your peace that you have when you are in conflict with other people. Nothing uh, does that more than when your relationship is out of whack with God. See, when you're disconnected from God and you're out of whack with God, you don't have peace with the Lord. You're not going to have that common peace, peace of God being with us. When we talked about last week, his name is Emmanuel, God with us. But when you're not connected with God and you don't have the peace of God in your heart, then you're not going to feel the calmness that God literally brings to us. See, the Bible said that Jesus came and the first thing he came to do to restore the peace between man and God. So why do we need our peace restored? We need our peace restored because of sin. And see, when sin entered the world, it made a separation between God and man. And as a result, there was conflict between God and man. So anytime you decide to go your own way, let me show you this morning. When you try to do your own thing and you go your own way and you have, you think you know, you, your thinking is better than God, that you're better than God, you can be your own God. Then literally you begin to have conflict with God. When you know what God's word says and you decide I'm not going to obey God's word. I have, I have something else. I got a better way to do it. When you make up your own rules, when you decide that you're going to be your own Lord, you're going to take ownership of your own life. When you are your own master, when you go to the word and you say, you know, I'm going to read this word, but that word does not apply to me. I'm not going to live by the word of God. So in other words, when you do your own thing, you are separated from God. When you disobey God, you are fighting with God. When you ignore what God is saying, that is an act of rebellion. When you begin to ignore the Lord, then there is conflict between you and God. The Bible says there is no peace there because there is what we call a disconnect. That's why sometimes God feels like he's a million miles away. We're not connected to the Lord because we're busy doing our own thing versus is listening to the voice of God and applying God's voice to our life. See, God didn't want you to be connect, disconnected, but he wants you to be connected to him. That's why Romans chapter five, verses one says this, since we are made right with God by faith in Christ, we have peace with God because of what Jesus has done for us. See, we have the peace with God comes from what Jesus Christ has done for each of us on the cross. And see, when Jesus went to the cross, he went to the cross for the purpose of reconciling us back to God so that we could have what peace with God. Amen. Romans chapter five, verses 10 says this, even though, even though we was his enemy, God made peace with us. Did you know you was an enemy under God? Even though we were enemies, his enemies, God made peace with us because his son died for our sins. Now that we are at peace with God, we will be saved for eternity by his son's life. So we see that God became the ransom for us. God made the ultimate sacrifice for us so that we could be at peace with the Lord. I'm so glad glad this morning. What a gift, the gift of peace. He gave us a gift that we could have, that we could have peace with the Lord. See, when we have peace with the Lord, then we have accepted what God has done on the cross for us. He paid it all. He paid it all for you and I. And I'm so glad that we didn't have to pay the ransom for our sins. I'm so glad that if we didn't have to pay with monetary monies to come before the Lord, I'm so glad that Jesus already paid it in advance. See, we probably wouldn't have enough money to pay for all the sins that we have accomplished. 
but Jesus paid it all. See, we have the second kind of peace. The second kind of peace is a peace within. That's what I call the emotional peace. The Bible says uh, that that peace, that is a peace that's on the inside. That is the peace of God. When you have the peace of God, you have God on the inside. That is the coming source that's in your life. Sometimes people look at you and they, you're going through trials and you're going through circumstances and they're looking at you because you're skipping around and you have joy and you have a smile on your face and they wonder what's really going on. Why can you have joy and you're going through these specific trials? Why can you have joy and you just been diagnosed with cancer? Why can you have joy? Why? Because you have the peace of God within you. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15 says this, so let the peace of God rule in your heart. That is the inner peace. That's the peace that's on the inside. It's internal. That is the emotional peace that God gives us. The peace of God literally rules our heart. It governs our heart. So we're able to walk in peace. We need that gift of peace. Don't you agree today? Especially in 2020, we need this kind of peace. And when I look at the world, the world is a void of this peace. And they're searching. And they're searching for answers. And they're searching for answers to their problems. They're stressed out. They have so much anxiety. They got all this stuff that's going on. But if you are a child of the Most High God, you ought to be resting in what God has provided for you. And since we are the ones that have the answer, we can go and share our faith and tell somebody else about the goodness of the Lord. And tell them, hey, listen, I know Corona is here, but my faith is in God and God alone. I know that there's a vaccine. I might be on the back of getting a vaccine, but I have a trust in the Lord that God is going to protect me. God is going to cover me. God is going to surround me. And he's not going to let any deadly thing come nigh me, not even in my dwelling place. See, when you have the peace of God. You can stand on the promises of the Lord. You can stand on God's word and it will cause you to begin to function with peace in your heart. Now the word peace, when we look at the word peace, it is the word shalom. It is a word. It's a broad definition of this word shalom. You know, the Jews would say when they greet each other, they would say shalom. It means harmony. It means uh, happiness, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, well-being, tranquility. It is the word peace. Is that that common center that God, that when he talks about the heart, he's talking about the heart of a man. It calms your heart during your times of testing in your life. It soothes all of your worries. When your emotions seem out of whack, that's the kind of peace we're talking about, the peace of God. The Bible, I wanted to tell you this morning, now when you read your word, the Bible is full of what I call peace promises. And there's a peace promise for every single problem that you can go through. There's a scripture that corresponds with whatever you're going through that you can have peace in your life. There is promises in the word of God that God has provided for us. And we have to grab hold to the promises and stand on the word of God and to begin to trust the Lord. For those who that are broken hearted, God will comfort you in peace. When you have a confused heart, he will guide you in peace. When you have a repentant heart, he will give you the forgiving peace. When you're worried, he'll give you some confidence so that you can keep going and you're able to move forward. So let me remind you, I want to say it again. So before you leave out of this place and even next week when trouble come, I want you to know that there is peace promises that God has provided for you and I, regardless of what the situation may be, regardless of what the problem is, there's a peace promise that's out there for you. You stand on the word of God. 
God. If you have financial problems, there's financial peace. If you have physical problems, there's physical peace. Whatever the problem is in your life, God has a peace promise for you. See, he said, I came. Jesus came. He came to give us what the gift of peace. He came presenting. That is who he is. He came presenting us and making it possible for us to have peace. What the Lord is really telling us, he said, listen, I don't want you to worry. I don't want you to worry about anything so that you can have peace within. See, you can't have peace within and worry at the same time. You're not going to be peaceful if you're just focusing on your problems. So instead of focusing on your problems, focus on the God that can answer your problem. And then it'll allow you to have peace and joy in your heart. See, when we begin to make God bigger in our lives and make our circumstances small, when we begin to serve him as he is the big God, that he's a way maker, that he's a miracle worker, that God is a deliverer and there's nothing that is too difficult and nothing that is too God for God. When we begin to stand on that and trust God. Don't you know whatever you're going through is going to seem a little small. It's going to look a little small when you look at it and you look at what God is doing and what God will do in your life. Now the third kind of peace is the peace with others. That call, I call that your relational peace. You see, when our life is out of whack and when the Father hit, this is what happens when we are far from God, the farther away from God, the more messed up we are. Let me say it again because some of y'all didn't get it. The farther away from God you are, the more messed up you are. And guess what? It affects your relationships. See, when you're far from God or you're distant from God, you can even be a believer and be distant from the Lord. Because why? How can you do that? You can be a believer. You confess the faith of Jesus Christ and you can say that I'm saved, but you're not in the word of God. You're not seeking his face. You're not praying. You're not obeying. God and see so the farther you're away from God the more messed up you are in the inside you're not allowing God's word to do what it is supposed to be doing in your life in other words, if you want a strong marriage, get closer to God. See, when your mates, uh, when the closer you get to God and the closer you get to, you begin to read his word. Uh, I need to make this specific. You got to read his word and then you got to be a doer of the word. You got to obey it. So the closer you get to God and the closer your mate gets to God, the closer you come together. See, the reason why we have so much conflict is because we're not getting close to God. It's about what you want. It's about what the other individual wants. It's about me, 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 I, 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 instead of looking at the word of God and what God says and what God tells you to do. And when you walk in obedience to the truth of the word of God, if both of you are walking in obedience, you will see God bring harmony and unity in your relationship. So if I get closer to God, my spouse will get closer to God. Amen. And so the farther I away from God, the more cranky I get with other people. The more just, you know, I, you know how we are sometimes, especially during this season. This is just busyness and, you know, we're shopping and we're trying to do all of this. And I end the year and we get cranky because, you know, we ain't spent no time in the presence of God. And see, so when you need to spend time talking to him, time reading his word, time obeying his word, and the closer you get to him, the more calm you are. And you're not going to be stressed out. I like what Ephesians chapter 2 verses 16 says this. Christ brought us all together through the death of the cro on the cross. 
the cross got us to embrace each other and end the hostility between the different groups. See, Christ is the one that is bringing us together because of what he did on the cross, because of the death on the cross. He is causing us to come together. Christ has given us, this says the cross get, gets us to embrace one another and to end the hostility between all the different groups. I want to put a pin here this this morning and especially for the body of Christ there should be unity among us there should not be any division among we serve the same God I don't care what the color of your skin is I don't care what political party that you believe in there should still be unity in the body of Christ we should be able to come together because why because God is the source God is the answer God has already made a way of peace for each and every one of us we're going to have to take the peace treaty, the peace plan that God has given us, and we're going to have to walk it out. And it looks like as believers, we have just laid aside what God, what God has called us to be and who he says we are, you know, because of what we believe in. But there should be unity among us, not your politics. There should be unity in the body of Christ. And I believe during this time, the enemy is using this weapon of division in the body of Christ to get us focused on something that God did not intend for us to put all of our focus in. Doesn't mean that it's not something that we don't need to focus on, but God did not intend for us to focus so heartily on those things. So we miss the mark and then we're not doing what God has caused us to do in the earth. See, God, Jesus is our way. He's our way of peace. And when you look around, there's so much injustice and there's so much crime and racism. But God is the one that will bring us together. The Bible says this in Galatians chapter 3, verses 28. It says, in Christ's family, there is no division between Jews and Gentiles, slaves and free, even males and female. God is the equalizer. He equalizes the playing field. When he went to the cross, God says, listen, everybody have access to me. He didn't say just the Jews have access. He says the Jews and the Gentiles have access, male and female. God is the great equalator. So there's a few principles I believe that we need to have if we're going to begin to enjoy the peace of God. Number one, we must come to God with an attitude of humility. So you got to come and humble yourselves and instead of to God, the word says that God opposes the proud, but he give grace what to the humble. So when you come to God, you can't come to God all puffed up. You can't come to God acting like you know everything, like you got yourself, but you better humble yourself before God. God. God, he resists those that are prideful. If you haven't gotten your ass, your prayers answered, you better check your heart whether you got some pride in your heart or not. God, he resists the proud. But he give grace to those that are humble. So when we humble ourselves, God will give you peace. When you um, in exchange for your anxiety, he'll give you some tranquility. God will give you peace when you humble yourself. And, and humble, when you come to God in an humble heart, it touches the heart of God to actually begin to minister to you. You can go before the Lord and you can begin to ask him humbly, Lord, I need some help. Help. I don't know how many of you need help when it's come to peace. There's times when my heart was troubled. I needed to go before the Lord and say, God, I need you right now. I need you to come and God do whatever you need to do, but I need some peace because my heart is overwhelmed. Isaiah said this in Isaiah 26, 14. It says the Lord grants us peace for all, uh, for all we have and all we have comes from him. What he was saying, he says, listen, God is the answer. He said, God grants us peace. He says, cause all we have, everything that we have, everything that we are, it comes from the Lord himself. That is why God grants us peace. So we got to understand where our peace come from. And the Bible says that the Lord is closer to those that are broken hearted. 
He said he regret, he rescues the humble. He rescues those that are humble before him. See, if your heart is broken and when you're, because you're going through situations and problems in your life, when you humble yourself before God, God is going to come and he's going to rescue you. That's a promise that's in the word of God. If your heart is overwhelmed, you can go to God. God will meet you right where you are. He will strengthen you. Not only will he do that, but he will encourage you. Now there is an antidote that's in the word of God and uh, that for stress and that's in Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 through 7 and here it was it, t- it tells us he says don't worry about anything instead pray about everything you don't want to be stressed don't worry he says listen exchange your your stress for prayer he said don't worry about it instead I need you to begin to pray about it. tell God what you need and then after you tell God what you need begin to thank the Lord and see God begin to thank him as if you already have it. See, when God gives us a gift, he gives us the gift of peace. We got to begin to thank him for the gift that has already been given to us. And then after we do all of that, we're going to experience the peace of God that's greater than the human mind can ever understand. You need the peace the word says in the peace that surpasses all understanding. You need the peace of that surpasses all understanding to guard your heart. Yes, we do. We need God's peace to guard our heart. We don't know what 2021 is, is coming, what it's going to bring to the table. But if we have the peace of God, we have God with us, Emmanuel. We have the peace of God with us. We have God with us as we walk through it. Guess what? You can read sure that you are going to be okay even if you walk through a storm so you got to humble yourself first thing humble yourself before the Lord and here's the second answer it says we must expect God we must expect Jesus to help us you got to have an expectation that when you go boldly before the Lord, when you ask the Lord, God is going to help you. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 says this. It says, come to me, all of you who are tied and worn out from carrying a heavy load. I will give you rest. Yoke up with me and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble, and you will find peace and rest for your soul. So first thing, what he tells us to do, we got to come to him. So the first step of is coming to the Lord. When we come to the Lord, he's going to exchange our panic for peace, our worry for worship, our fear for faith, our anxiety for tranquility. We got to come to the Lord, bring it to the Lord, bring whatever it is to the Lord. Stop taking it to everybody else except the Lord. Begin to come to the Lord. He tells us, It's a beck and call. Come to me. (laughs) He said, all who are tired and worn out from carrying the heavy load. When I look at the saints, they are tired. They are worn out from carrying this heavy load. They are overbearing. When Jesus has made a promise to us in the word of God, he says, come. So what do we got to do? Just come, come to the Lord. And this is the second thing we got to connect with Jesus. He says, yoke up with me. Yoke up with me. See, God did never, he never intended for us to pull all of these worries, all of our burdens, all of our stresses, all of our fears, all of our anxieties, all of our responsibility. He never intended for you to ever carry those things alone. When God is telling, when Jesus is saying in the word, yoke up with me. And most of y'all might be thinking about an egg yolk. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the yoke, which, which was a, a little piece of wood that will cause two oxen to be yoked together. And so what Jesus is saying, yoke up with me. In other words, you yoke up with him and then your burden is going to be light. He says, listen, I'm going to carry it for you. You don't have to weigh it or carry it all by yourself. Then life will begin to be full of peace. He's going to exchange all of your worries, all of your fears, all of your anxieties. Every time that you yoke up with the Lord, it's going to bring peace in your life and then let Jesus change me this is what he said he said learn of me 
for I am gentle and humble. He says, learn of me. Do you think there are some things that God knows about life that perhaps you don't know anything about? Do you think that he knows about some things that you're going through? See, he already know about your stress. He, he knows your stress level. He knows what you're going through. He knows the things that you're going to encounter. So he says, he tells us to do, learn from him. He says, what if you learn from me, I'm going to teach you how to rest. He says, I'm going to teach you how to rest. He says, I'm gentle and I'm humble. But if you learn, if you're willing to come to me, ask of me and learn from me, I'm going to show you and I'm going to teach you how to rest. Isaiah 26 verses 3 says this, you Lord, give true peace to those who depend on you because they trust in you. So it is God that gives the true peace. So what I'm coming to tell you this morning, the bottom line is that the gift of peace is for you. God has already provided the gift of peace and he provided for you. So the Prince of Peace came on Christmas and for us to be reminded that he brought the gift of peace to us. And he brought the gift of peace that the world cannot give you. You're not going to be able to find the kind of peace that the Bible is talking about from the world. God did not create you to live a life of stress and anxiety, depression, worry, frustration, but he created you to have the peace that surpasses all understanding. So as you walk out this Christmas season, and if you reflect upon 2020, and you think about all the things that you have encountered, just come to the Lord, begin to ask the Lord, and God is going to walk with you. He's going to calm the storms of life. He is the God that's going to comfort you. He's the God that's going to strengthen you. I'm so glad he came. I'm so glad he came in the earth for us, bringing us the greatest gift possible that we could ever receive. See, I don't need any drugs this morning. I don't need any alcohol. I don't need to leave out here and go get my fix. Because the Jesus that I serve is the heart fixer. He's the mind regulator. He's the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father. He's a good God. And I want you to be encouraged. He came for you and I so that we could have hope in the world that we live in. God wants you to be hope, to have hope and not be walk in fear. And not to walk as if you don't have the hope. But this morning, I want us to look to Jesus and begin to reflect on what the Father God has provided for each and one of us. Amen. The first thing I believe you can do if you want to have the kind of peace that God provides is to first give your life to Jesus Christ. If you have not made it right, I talked about us being separated from God a little bit earlier. If you haven't made a decision from Jesus Christ and you haven't come to him and confessed him as your Lord and the savior of your life, this is a good day to do that. This is a good opportunity to come to the Lord, especially when he's offering gifts to us. He wants to give you peace. He wants to calm the storms in your life. So regardless of what you're going through, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to us as a savior. And our Lord and savior wants to be friends with us. So this morning, I want to offer him to you if you haven't made a decision for Jesus Christ. Come on, I want you to think about it. You've tried it your way. You've done it all, all that you think that you can do, and it's still not going right. But if you begin to trust the Lord, I believe that God will begin to turn those things around. And even if some of the situations in your life don't turn around, you have the peace of God that will go with you. And he's able to take you through the storm. 
So I want to give you an opportunity to pray with us. If you made that decision, you say, you know what? I want to invite Christ in my heart. We as a church family, we're going to pray with you this morning. Let's do it together. Let's ask God to come into our heart. Church, as we pray this morning, would you repeat after me? Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. I believe that you died on the cross and you was resurrected on the third day and you did it all for me so that I could be reconciled to you. So today I receive the gift of salvation. I receive you as my Lord and the Savior of my life. And I thank you for it. Amen. If you made that decision for Jesus Christ this morning, you know the Bible tells us that the angels in heaven, they rejoice. So as a church of God, we rejoice with you this morning. We're so glad that you made a decision to follow after Jesus Christ. If you're watching on the screen, there's a button that you can push. And would you just fill out the form and let us know that you've made a decision for Jesus Christ. We want to walk it out with you. We walk it out as family. We want to help you to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're in the building and if you made that decision for the first time on your seat pocket behind the chair, there's a card. Would you please fill that out? Let us know you made a decision for Jesus Christ this morning. Now, I want to pray for you because we're in a season right now. I believe that we need the peace of God like never before. How many of you can stand some peace of God in your life? <laughs> Hallelujah. Church, I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask the church of the mighty God to stand those that are in the house this morning. And we're going to pray. We're going to ask the Lord to help us to begin to walk in the peace that God has provided for us. And if you're listening to us, pray alongside of us. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all of the listeners this morning, for those that are in the house and for those that are listening on the air. God, I thank you, God, that you provided the gift of peace for us, Lord. Thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. God, we thank you, God that you loved us enough to come to the earth to provide peace for us, Lord. Some of us that are listening today, God, we have gone through many trials, many storms, many tests, Lord God. And we're fixing anxieties, fears, and frustration. But because you are the Prince of Peace, you will provide us joy, God. You will calm the storm of life. You will literally give us that inner peace that will calm our heart. So, Father, I pray for inner peace for anybody right now that is stressed out. God, that's going through anxiety, Lord, right now. In the name of Jesus, God. God, I know what they see before them. They might be facing death, God. They might be facing conviction. God, they might be facing all kinds of things, God, but whatever they're facing, it could be a diagnosis, God, but you can go before them and God, you can literally give them the peace that surpasses all understanding. God, would you allow your peace to guard our heart like never before? God, you came to give us the kind of peace that only you can give us. The world cannot give us this kind of peace, but God, we're grateful that you are the God that will provide all of the peace that we need in our life. So God, I pray that you will calm the hearts of the believers under the sound of my voice, Lord, even as we walk in this season and we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. God, as we go through this season, God, we will go in joy. We will go refreshed. We'll go in tranquility, serenity, and peace, God. We thank you, Jehovah. You have provided what we stand in need of. And for that, we are grateful. So church, can we give God some praise and thanksgiving? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for your peace. I want to encourage you, just begin to rejoice in what God has already provided for you. And take access, you know, you got to access it. You access it through the word of God. And then God will strengthen you. He'll encourage you. And he'll help you. God is with us. He loves us. He cares for us. And he's concerned about whatever 
you are going through. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. God is committed to us. So we can find hope in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, give God a hand clap as the worship team come this morning. When I was small, we used to get this message. When someone would give us something really good, they say, you should share and share alike. Well, that's what I want you to do right here on Facebook. I want you to share the message that comes to you every week from the light of the world. There are powerful messages that will be life-changing and someone's heart will be turned to God because you took the opportunity to share. So like and then share so that someone's life can be changed and you can be blessed as well.